Hello and welcome to APS. Uh, Problem Squared. Excellent. The podcast where we SYP. Solve your Your problems. Solve your problems. (laughs) I was like, so your pants. (laughs) <laughs> well, I mean, that's a problem we could be solving. I need to clarify that uh, Matt has decided to use acronyms that he has not run past me before this. Correct, correct. So I'm doing a good job. That would make things less efficient. If I R-T-T-P-Y-F. Read the... I, I've forgotten all of These things are not written already. down either, so Beck has got to memorise, ran them past you first. Ah. Uh, anyway, uh, I am MP. Matt Parker. Excellent. <laughs> I wasn't sure if I was going to get Member my actual. Parliament. Yeah, I was about to say, yeah. <laughs> and I'm joined by BH. Buckingham Palace. <laughs> <laughs> Buckingham Palace. <laughs> Beckham. Beckham. Uh, O-T-E. On this episode, we'll be looking at whether spoons can keep bubbles bubbly. I will be measuring some rulers. And there's some um, any other business. Use the acronym. Oh, the one time. The one time. <laughs> AOB. Yeah, Any other bubbles? Deliberate. <laughs> Beck, how have you been? Good. We're back in the office. Yes. We're both back in the same country. Yeah. Not the same country we were in when we last were last. Last time we were in the same country. Yeah. We're ba- We're in the same different country. We're in the UK, baby. Yeah. And we have producer Lauren in the room with us. It's been a she, while. But... She's smiled. She smiled. As, as a podcast producer, you'd think she'd understand the importance of sound uh, on think, an audio medium. I think she understands how wrong things can go if you've got a microphone in front of you. <laughs> 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 She's watching and learning. Uh, so yeah, other than ob- the obvious joy of being here with us again, yeah, and being one podcast recording away from a game of bar billiards. Mm. Uh, how you doing, BB? <laughs> oh, BB. I'm good. Actually, you might remember that I texted you when I was in Australia to say that I was seeing you getting a tattoo. Oh, you did. And uh, uh, I was going to get a triangle to represent a plate. I was your triangle play consultant. Yep, and I wasn't sure whether to get an isosceles. Or an equilateral. There's a lot of choices in the triangle triangle world. So, yeah, you you were saying how majority of play buttons are equilateral. But I was like, oh, I definitely remember them being isosceles. Yeah. Because what I did for you is I, I looked at the emojis that have play buttons on them mm. in a bunch of different systems. Yeah. To see how they're rendered to mm-hmm. analyze the triangles. Yeah. yeah. So it's because I wanted something that denotes play and playfulness. Yeah. So I thought play button made sense. But also... The idea came to me when I was with uh, two of my oldest school friends, Amy and Elise, and we're like, oh, it's a triangle. That represents three of us. Oh, as well. yeah. It's nice. All three of us got one. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And we're all equal, which is why it's an equal triangle. Equal triangle. Yeah. Yeah. Good work. Long story short, got a tattoo of an equilateral triangle. <laughs> <laughs> I just liked the, uh, I like the fact that it's equal on, on all three sides. There's something very pleasing about that. So yeah, there it is. It? I'm Iris. Oh, look at that. That's great. I'll take a photo. I'll nice it on equilateral the, triangle. The socials. Yeah, he did real well. It's a it's very a fine good. line one. But you can you can when I twist, twist my your arm, wrist and, and make it scaling. Like I can make it. There that's, you go. There's uh, my socials now. That's There's great. The, well, actually, I, speaking of um, tattoos and oh yeah. and other related uh, midlife crisis things, <laughs> I I will say that I've u- I've used the term I'm having a midlife crisis yep. earlier, so I'm not offended by that. Oh, yeah. But I am slightly offended that you've said that without no, me saying it to you. I didn't. Con- I was like, she's not going to be offended by this. <laughs> no, well, I got I got a brand new uh, pair of motorbike gloves. Uh, do, do you own a motorbike? I do not own a motorbike. Are you planning on getting a I motorbike? I am not planning on getting a motorbike. Why motorbike gloves? Because I went on the motorbike once. Because I would have talked about it on the immediate podcast. Yeah. Uh, but I wasn't allowed to. You have told me, and I think you may have mentioned it on a I'm a Wizard. Right, okay, because uh, it's recently become but now de-embargoed. It's yes. yes, I'm allowed to talk about this now. Yes. I went on a motorbike because it was filmed. I went, they put me on a motorbike and filmed me for a documentary um, that was released quite recently. Mm-hmm. It's called Rapid Motion Through Space. It's like a history of speed made by our fine people at the Cosmic Shambles as Network. As in the, the speed, as not in the, the velocity, yes, as mm-hmm. in the change in distance over time. Mm-hmm. Although they explore many different interpretations of speed. Did they include the film? They did not. What a waste. As part of the documentary, they were, well, there were two things they wanted that were seemingly separate, but both fell on me. One was they wanted someone to talk about the mathematics of speed, like velocity and derivatives mm-hmm. of location. And separately, they wanted to put someone 
on a very fast motorbike. <laughs> so you've obviously got Formula One, which is very fast cars. Yes. And then you've got MotoGP, which yes. is very fast motorbikes. Or a game on Sega. Exactly. And uh, actually, they made me play the most recent MotoGP game first Great. on like a PlayStation or something. Fantastic. Before they put me on the actual bike. And it how did you? not help. No <laughs> help whatsoever. So it's around Silverstone. So it's still around like the proper racetrack. Mm. And it's not just me on the bike by myself. No. It's one of the X race bikes. I think it's the 2012 Ducati bike, which they've altered to, to make the seat a little bit bigger. And I want to stress, not a lot bigger. Just enough to fit two people on it. Wow. And they've put two tiny handles in the fuel tank. And so what Sounds they, safe. The, well, yeah, exactly. What they do is they put a terrifying and small Italian man on the front. And <laughs> Wait, I'm going to say someone who can ride a motorbike. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, I, I, th I think that's implied. Or is it, is it just they need to be small and Italian? Small and Italian, top priorities. That, that, that was on the... Ex, you know, uh, MotoGP, yeah. rider third. And then they put me on the back and I kind of hug the terrifying Italian man mm -hmm. by holding onto the... Um, Two little handles. Mm -hmm. And then they do a lap. One lap. You only get one lap. And like th when they said you get one lap, I was like, eh, just one lap? All this effort for one lap? <laughs> Two corners in, I was like, I'm good. Let me off now. That's yeah, fine. Yeah, That's yeah. enough. So, um, so I had my phone logging all my data mm -hmm. as I went around the lap. I hit 72.25 meters per second. Top velocity according to my phone. That is a lot of meters in a second. That's a lot of meters in a second. Think of something that's 72 and a quarter meters away. And you're there a second later. Yep. Nah. Oh, yeah. well, you know, if you're on a plane. Commonly <laughs> referred to as 260 kilometers an hour. Oof. Or 160 miles an hour. For people that's who a are. very... That's a spicy uh, meatball. <laughs> <laughs> so, and the only thing holding me on with these gloves, like, it's not like you're strapped in or anything. And your arms. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But they're, they were very much, you know, the backup to the hands. So, mm. you, like, you just hold <laughs> on to this thing. And, the, you know, like intrusive thoughts. You're going around. My brain's like, you can just let go. I hate that. And then my brain's like, you know what? If you get tired of holding on, same thing's going to happen. Like if you let go, it very much felt like the before in there's going to be some accident one day. And then the after were people saying, can you believe we used to just put people in the back of MotoGP bikes and send them yeah, yeah. around? Yeah. How on earth did that ever happen? Yeah, yeah. They'd be like, wait, hang on. That guy's just holding on. <laughs> yeah. You, you just get a random person off the street and assume they can hold on for long enough. Is there a G-force, like a way of calculating the G-force of, of that It was substantial. G-force would be like the cornering. The cornering is terrifying because yeah, the bike course. is basically sideways. Yeah, I was going to say. Like you're, just, that would... you're looking at the road going, why well, I should not be this close to this the road. This is right next to my whole side. Yeah. Everything I thought I knew about friction was a lie. There's no way physics... The, the, the bike defies Ghost. physics. Ghosts it were carrying you. That's, what, that's how it works. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The most ridiculous thing I've done in my life. Mm. But my problem for the listeners, I found an app that kind of dumped all the sensors, all the data into one big um, CSV, one big spreadsheet. And the, uh, like the speed and the location is done every second, which is why I can say I got to 72 and a quarter meters per second because I just went through the secondly data. Mm. I really want to know the exact shape of the acceleration as I went around. And I want to be able to do higher derivatives because the rate of change of acceleration is jerk. And the rate of, <laughs> stop it. And the rate of change of jerk is uh, snap. <laughs> so I want to know, did I experience jerk? Yes. Was there any snap? Mm -hmm. Was there crackle or pop? Actual names mm -hmm. of the other derivatives. Uh, but I'm not good enough at analyzing data from phone sensors because it's it's complicated stuff. I just want to pause for a moment and say any new listeners, if you uh, went, oh, you had me until that moment, uh, I'm with you. I have no idea what Matt just asked, but I'm aware that but some of our listeners do. The people do, I'm talking to. <laughs> they'll be the ones that provide the answers. I'm going to make a YouTube video about this. So I've got the 60 hertz data from all the accelerometers, all the inclin all the angles, the works. Mm -hmm. But it's very hard to disentangle gravity from like just me moving on the bike. Yeah. Was your phone just like in your pocket? I strapped it to my leg. Yes. Mm. No pockets. So if anyone out there thinks they could help, I want to get all the phone data I've got and I want a, a detailed plot of my exact, I don't mind acceleration, velocity, something so I can then do all the other derivatives. Mm. So if you want to go to the problem posing page at aproblemsquared.com, select solution and let me know that you think you might be able to uh, work with that data. Let me know. And if you have no idea what Matt's talking about, Wait um, for the video. just like, I just give yourself a little 
Just give yourself a little hug from me. <laughs> it's okay. And that's us going like, yeah, we're just hold on. We're here just, together. Just grip the handle, don't let go. Hold on. <laughs> Our first problem this episode is from Sophie via a long, complicated podcast route that you'll explain in a moment. Yeah. But the problem is from Sophie. Does dangling a spoon in the top of open champagne really keep it fizzy? And if so, why? Yeah. Why? Well, first of all, yep. I'll explain where this problem, problem yeah. comes from. Because normally they come from our problem posing page at problemsquared.com. Yeah. Well, this is actually an outsourced problem from another podcast. Oh, we're taking overflow problems. That's right. Yeah. How so, many podcasts are in the problem solving space? Surprisingly, quite a lot. The PSS, they call it. They do, don't they? Yep. Down at the Y. <laughs> uh, so I did Jordan Gray's podcast, uh, Translating with Jordan Gray, and Jordan answers a big and small problem from a guest. Oh. And then at the end of the episode, some listeners send in uh, smaller problems yeah. or questions, I should say, to Jordan, and she and her guests try and, try and solve them solve together. Them. Yep. And this question came in. Jordan and her co-host on that episode, Tanya Moore, they were umming and ahhing about the answer to this, ah, this one. question. Interesting. And I said, Good oh, promotion. if this was a problem squared, we would use this as the perfect opportunity to drink a bunch drink of- Drink some booze. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> drink a bunch of bubbly and, and do Tax it as an experiment. Tax deductible bubbly. <laughs> exactly. This was great because you rang me show. up, explained yes. that, mm -hmm. and I was a bit shocked because not that long ago- I was at a dinner with a, my wife and a bunch of her kind of colleagues, her astro colleagues. That's what they're called. And that's what they're the called. ACs. Yep, yep, yep. And <laughs> that's them. And one of them mentioned this. No one could go and do any research. It was just a bunch of discussion. And mm -hmm. a lot of people saying, well, there's no mechanism. How on earth would that work? But then other people saying that they're pretty convinced it works, even despite the lack of mechanism. So you rang me and I'm like, that, what a, what a quinky drink. I'm ready, to, <laughs> <laughs> ready, ready to go. <laughs> You've set up. You've set it I up. I have. Yeah. Oh, under your guidance. So what I've done, bought four bottles of sparkling wine. Yes. <laughs> they're all they're in the fridge in the downstairs kitchen in my office as we speak. And at 10 p.m. last night, I opened three of them and removed 200 milliliters of sparkling wine from each. That yes. was correctly disposed of. <laughs> and one of them I just put back in the fridge, just wide open. Not yep. a care in the world. Another one, I put a proper stopper on it, like one of these clamping uh, sparkling yeah. wine stoppers. Mm -hmm. And the third one, I put the spoon in it. Yeah. Put it back in the fridge. And I kept one unopened. So yes. we've also got a, a optimal amount of, like that's brand new sparkling. Mm -hmm. But we've also got opened and resealed sparkling. And we've got the worst case scenario just opened and left. Yes. Now there's three of us here. Yeah. We can try them. But the ultimate test would be, if we don't know which one's which in advance. Yes. Because yeah. everyone just has to rank them in order of bubbliness. That's I think true. I think that's what we're going to do. What I'm going to do is shuffle. I might, we might even get some cards, make this proper random. Shuffle four cards. And I'm going to go downstairs, make sure the bottles are indistinguishable. So they're all open the same. And then I'm going to put them in that random shuffled order and number them one to four. All right. I'm then going to bring them up and put them on the table here. I know which one's which from one to four, and I'll write that down. So one is whatever, two is whatever, three is whatever. You're then going to shuffle A, B, C, and D. And then when I'm not looking, you're going to label them A, B, C, D and remember the order. So you don't know which is what A is, what B is, what C is, what D is. Mm. But I also don't know because I don't know what order you put them on originally. Sure. <laughs> so, so okay. Anyway, uh, I'm going to go get the booze uh -huh. and bring it up here. I love that this is my problem to solve, but you've just made the... Infinitely no, more I'm, I'm just actioning your requests. <laughs> and I'm back. Okay, so I'm looking at now four bottles labeled DCAB, and I don't know which is which. Mm -hmm. And you don't know which is which. And you don't know which is which. Nope. So now we've got to rank them by most bubbly to least bubbly. Yep. All right. Should we do 50 mil at a time just to save us? No. No. <laughs> no, no, we deal. should. Well, no. Well, we are celebrating a million million downloads. That's true. Yeah, that is another reason to do this. This is a scientific way of... We've got so many excuses for these drinks. Yeah, all right. Okay. Oh, I'm, I'm first, am I? Oh, look at that one. What could that be? Pouring that, there were not 
a huge amount of bubbles coming out. And which one are you pouring? Which one's this one? D. There's letter D. I've poured more than 100 nah, mils. Okay, everyone's pouring 111.3 <laughs> grams. <laughs> Lauren? Already, Lauren's glass has far more. Way, it's got way. A head. Look at it go. She's got a head on her. Okay. Oh, D has not got a lot of sparkle going on. Yeah, that is not bubbly. That is not bubbly at all. Ugh. What even is this? <laughs> it's the finest oh, sparkling Cuvée. wine 10 pounds can buy. Right. I just poured myself a B and uh, there's, there's more foam on it. I'm going to go for the A. Quite a lot of foam on the A. Lots of bubbles coming up from the bottom. <laughs> I don't know if you're about to burp or what. <laughs> <laughs> the first one was so unbubbly. Oh, you just slammed it back. <laughs> <laughs> it all fizzed up in my throat. <laughs> and then you were caught and un my, caught my, unaware. And my throat didn't know whether it was whether it was liquid or air. Okay. So it just opened up. Do I breathe? <laughs> yeah. Guys, I thought it was a drink, but it just it's opened, gas. <laughs> <laughs> it just opened all the holes. <laughs> I think I just, I think, oh, yeah, it, I, I've, um, I've just mainlined that straight into my system now. For people who are wondering what's happening at home, Beck's doing that thing. It looks like <laughs> when you put something in your mouth that's too hot. <laughs> <you're trying> to, <laughs> except it's a cross between that and gargling. <laughs> it's very bubbly, this one. So A is the one that you're thinking is bubble town. Yeah, I'm now... Doing that, I am rinsing it like mouthwash to get rid of the bubbles so that I can swallow it. I can get a spittoon for you if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not a bad idea. Uh, and he is sprightly. Mm. I assume other people have done this experiment. Yeah, there have been like scientific dissertations on this. Oh, really? Yeah. Scientists. Yeah, there was a champagne researcher. A champagne re Is it just a really good researcher? or <laughs> It's... Well, Only researchers from Champagne who grew up in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, all, we all, we all know cool. everyone do the joke. <laughs> uh, Gerard Ligier Belair, uh, who wrote Sounds legit a book called Uncorked the Science of Champagne. Oh. They demonstrated the amount of carbon dioxide lost depends on the way the wine is poured into the glass. So, pouring into a tilted glass retains more carbon dioxide than pouring into a vertical glass. Makes sense. And using bubble imaging techniques, bubble imaging techniques, Ligier Belair was able to track the flow of the bubbles in a glass. Oh. I'm reading this directly from a Guardian article, I should say. This is very well worded and not my own reading. Gotcha. Yeah. This is by Jeff Scholarly for The Conversation. God, Jeff. The release of bubbles even depends on the inside surface of the glass. Yeah. Now, this is good because originally when we were going to do this test, it turned out you only had plastic champagne flutes. Yeah, to have a sufficient of the same type. Yeah. And I refused to let us shoot. use... Yeah. Normal glasses. You were like, I, I, because like, nah. we've got a real any glass goes attitude at home. So I actually drink the bulk of my sparkling wine from tumblers. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> the mouthful of sparkling wine. But this is interesting. Yep. There was a study on champagne by Michelle Vallad mm -hmm. and colleagues. Uh, it was published by the periodical Le Vendron Champenois. In 1994, I'm so sorry to any French-speaking listeners as well. Oh, the work, titled Le Mythe de la Petite Collier, The Myth of the Teaspoon, was designed to address the claim that a teaspoon, preferably a silver one, could, according to my translation, defy all the laws of physics and possess some legendary efficiency to protect the bubbles from escaping from an open bottle. Uh, the researchers used three strategies to assess the impact of bubble conservation on the wine. The change in pressure, the loss of weight, and sensory analysis, Ooh. which is what we're doing the sensory analysis. Yeah, because what you really want to do is something that measures the pressure from the residual gas. Weight's interesting because mm. I guess if there's dissolved carbon dioxide, there's slightly more mass in the drink. Mm. One is definitely not sparkly. The first one we tried. D. D's definitely. You know, you're right. What's interesting is D is terrible. A is amazing. And B and C are neck and neck. Sorry, I don't know how people drink really bubbly champagne. <laughs> like, I don't know. How do you do it? Do you just swallow it with all the bubbles the, in it? The trick is you take, but it hurts. You take a shot of carver. <laughs> and then you're, you're drinking the air. It's no, in, no, no, no. You, you sorry, drink, drink you, the carbon dioxide. You drink dioxide. the sparkling wine, you swallow the wine, and you breathe the bubbles out your nose. You breathe it's the bubbles out your nose? No, it's a very nose. straightforward process. 
<laughs> I, was like, you had, I had you until very straightforward process. <laughs> oh, I was like, wait, have I been drinking? Yeah. <laughs> That's... This is this would make a great uh, clickbait article. Is you've yeah. been drinking been sparkling wine, wine wrong? wrong. Yeah. <laughs> so in the research done in that 1994 article, the wines were opened, decanted, leaving 500 millimetres in one set and 250 millimetres in the second set. The wines were then stored at 12 with four methods to conserve the bubbles. Open bottle, yep. silver teaspoon, yep. stainless steel teaspoon. Oh. I guess just to see if there's a difference between yep. that. Uh, cork stopper, which uses yep. a hermetic seal. That's and crown use. seal, a metal oh. lid with crimped edges, like you oh. often see on a beer bottle. So we did something very similar. I did look up if the type of spoon makes a difference. And at least in the UK and the sites I searched, there was no mention of what metal. Because I did think maybe it's like silver or something. So we're using a stainless steel spoon. Mm. So if if the spoon works and we don't know why, it still works. Mm. But I can't, I mean, you could argue maybe there's some fluid dynamics reason why it changes the flow or disrupts or increases the turbulence of a slow moving fluid of gas coming out like yeah i, I could hand but then by that my... stage the gas has already left well when surely you it's a pressure put it thing. away you want to stop because when you put the stopper on what you're doing is you're increasing the pressure in yeah. the gas above the liquid to the point where the bubbles in the liquid stay there yeah they stay there because because yeah. The, the rate at which it comes out depends on the pressure of the gas above it. Mm. And technically, and this is me trying to just hand wave a plausible explanation, if there's no spoon, there's a there's a continuous smooth cylinder that gas can work its way up and out. Mm. Maybe the spoon introduces vortices that roll pleasure, back down pleasure. or disrupts the flow slightly such that it degasses at a slower rate compared to no spoon. I mean, I'm not convinced by that, mm. but having an object choking or interrupting a pipe with fluid moving through it does change the dynamics of the fluid flow. Yeah, like if you were to put your thumb over the end of a hose. Yeah, or even the old school choke on a car was moving something in the center of a pipe to change the flow rate. Like, So obstructions in a pipe do change flow rate, mm. but I feel like the flow is so slow it's not going to make a significant difference. Yeah. And then maybe the metal's like, well, because it conducts temperature better than the glass, something about the transfer of heat energy changes mm. the movement of the gas or the, and also if things are colder, carbon dioxide is more soluble. So potentially the spoon somehow alters the cooling or heating rate that changes the solubility. Mm. Again, I'm not convinced, but I can, I can hand wave a terrible. Yeah, I'm enjoying this. Yeah. Probably because I've had several glasses. <laughs> but that doesn't hurt. <laughs> now, uh, soluble, does that, I would think that that means the bubbles break down more quickly. No, soluble is in it, they don't become bubbles in the first place. So soluble means it's like as you heat water up, salt becomes more soluble. You can dissolve more salt or more wa sugar into hot water than you can cold water. Yep. With carbon dioxide, it's the other way around. If the water is colder, you can dissolve more carbon dioxide into it. Oh, so the bubbles go into it the stay first in, place. They stay, yeah, they stay in the liquid. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like if you were to freeze um, uh, something with bubbles in it really fast, the bubbles would stay in it. Uh, I mean, it's the correct result, <laughs> wrong mechanism. <laughs> yeah, I understand. <laughs> good, good, good. We are, you and I, Lauren, how do you feel? Are we in agreement that there are three that are, one is definitely not sparkly. The first one we tried. D. D is definitely. You know, you're right. What's interesting is D is terrible. A is amazing. And B and C are neck and neck. Can you give me, without me looking, B and C in these? Mm -hmm. And just remember which is which. Yep. I want to give you a look at them side by side. Left has more bubbles. Mm. But that could be the glass and the nucleation points. I mean, the headline is, I would drink either one. <laughs> so if the argument is how do you keep it so you drink it the next day, mm. 
Either of these is arguably sufficient. I would say left is slightly better. Okay. Just it's got more sparkle to it. Like there's more bubbles than left. Yeah, that's definitely more carbonated. Okay. Okay, so which is which? B for bubbles. I think absolutely A is amazing. B and C are close, but B is better than C. Yeah, in bubbles. Can't they're in alphabetical order. And D is the worst. And for the record, we 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 have sub double blinded a bunch of head to heads. Yeah, so we've done B versus, B versus C, C, A versus, C versus B. A. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I'm I'm very confident in that. Yeah. Honestly, I thought there would be a clear A. Mm. I thought there'd be a very clear Mo sparkling. Yeah. I thought there would be two neck and necks at the bottom. Yeah. And then another one that's almost as sparkling as the best one. Yeah. Me and too. That's not what's happened. No. There's a clear best one. Mm -hmm. B and C are neck and neck. So whatever we did for B and C Worked. is roughly equivalent, but B is slightly better than C. Mm -hmm. And whatever we did for bottle D is just terrible. Yeah. Shall we find out which is which? Yeah. Now, I think we're all in agreement that A is probably the one that was just opened. Absolute agreement. A is just opened. B is probably the one with the stopper, the official but stopper. But it's so close to C. Yeah, but yeah. But we all did agree well, that B is we, slightly more bubbly. I think we think B is probably the closest, yeah. C, I guess, had the teaspoon in it. I mean, because arguably, being opened, having 200 mils out and resealed, there's just more gas. Yeah. Which is more volume to pressurize. Yeah. So it's not going to be as good as A. No. I, I agree with B. And what I can't get my head around is either the spoon or open being so close yeah. to stopper. Yeah. And we think that we think that uh, D is the one that had nothing in it. D is terrible. Yeah. Whatever was D, the worst. Yeah. I mean, what a twist would it be if that was the one with the teaspoon? If it turns out it makes it, it more turns flat. Out, I don't know. Yeah. It, it either turns out that the spoon somehow makes it worse. Yeah. Or it makes it better, which uh, it, it terrifies me. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Okay. okay. <sighs> so here's what's going to happen. You're going to say that let's do A first. Mm -hmm. You say which number A is, and I'll tell you which bottle that was. Okay. Okay. You ready? Yeah. A was number four. Number four was the brand new bottle. Yeah. We called okay. it. Yeah, we called we that. Called we called it. that. Yeah, yeah. B. B. Was number three. No. Yeah. That's the spoon. No. What? <laughs> no. That's. Oh no! What was? What was C? What was C? C was number two. That's the stopper. At least D being number one fits. And D number one was open. Nothing. No. That's outrageous. The spoon works. The spoon was neck and neck, if not better than putting the stopper on it. I feel like that can't. No, no that I, can't be right. Did I do it right? I mean, how could I, I have you. done it wrong? Have you got the photo? Yeah. Show us the photo. D, C, B. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well. That blows my mind. Listen to And we were sober when we did that bit. I'm, I'm genuinely stunned. Now, the only thing is. Is that we only had it like that overnight? You yeah. you you put yeah. it in the fridge so, about so ten o'clock. So I put them in ten p.m. I got all the bottles. Mm. I opened three of them simultaneously mm -hmm. at ten p.m. Mm -hmm. I poured two hundred ml out of each of them. Yeah, and then I put a spoon in one. I put a stopper on another one. I did nothing to the third. Put them all in the same fridge. Yeah, ten p.m. You sent me a photo. Sent you a photo. Then twenty and a half hours later. Mm. I went downstairs, I opened the new one, took the spoon out, took the stopper off, made sure that the foil looked similar enough I couldn't tell the difference, nice. brought them up. But I suspect yeah. that uh, say you had a bottle and you were keeping it more than 24 hours right, over several nights, yep. I think you would then notice the difference between the stopper and the but teaspoon. But it was so stark. The difference between open with no spoon and spoon Mm. was already super distinct. Yeah. Like I'm willing to suggest that maybe the one that had the teaspoon just happened to be more bubbly. Now, yeah. Now, the following things are possible because we've only done it once. 
Mm. Maybe not all bottles of Cremant de whatevers <laughs> are born equal. Yeah. And one of the, that, just depending on how much sugar's in each one when it bottle ferments or whatever they do. Yeah. The the carbonation starting could be different. We then had to bring them from my house to the office. Yep. We put them all in a cool box, carried them down very carefully, or in the same cool. Even the sealed one was in the same cool box for completeness. Yeah. Maybe the position in the cool box changed, and I carried them real careful, but maybe I accidentally agitated one corner of the cool box more than another. Yeah. Or maybe. Unlikely. Just maybe. The spoon did something. This is proof of an assimilation. Oh. Uh, this is the worst. In the programming, there's a glitch. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. So now two things have to happen now. Number one, people have to try their own experiments at home and let us know what happens. Mm -hmm. If you do the experiment at home, go to the problem posing page at ourproblemsquared.com. The drop down menu, pick solution, because what is sparkling wine if not a solution? And then give us the results of your experiment. Ah, oh, so annoying. Is it, but, I mean, I'm, I'm both excited. Yeah. Because that's an, an, that's an, a uh, result that contradicts my hypothesis. Yeah, I don't understand how the spoon no. made a difference between the flat lines. But, and it could be a quirk, it could be like just a random fluctuation in the data. Hmm. But that definitely requires further investigation. Wow. So unfortunately, mm -hmm. we can't ding this. Ah, uh, because we can do we, the ding. We, we ding the glasses. We got the glass. Oh, we got the sound effect. We've never been so well equipped to ding something. We were like, that sounds great. We can use that when we ding, ding, ding this problem. Yeah. And it ended up being surprisingly, uh, but I tell you what, uh, I'm drowning my sorrows. We're just going to have to use that sound effect elsewhere in the episode. Uh, <laughs> Matt. Yep. Have you got a little dinglet problem for oh, me? Oh, I do. I don't know if my dinglet's still working, but we'll give it. <laughs> okay, from the top. <laughs> no, no, keep that. No, we're not keep, it, that keep it, keep it, keep oh, it. Anyway, okay, so. I just wanted to do some market research. I've actually got a problem you can help me with. Mm -hmm. I've been working on a product and I thought I'd show it to you. It's in early prototype stage. Yep. And you can give me some feedback. Okay. So here I've got a standard ruler. Yes. It's awful. Like it's just busy. There's a lot going on. Yeah. 30 centimeters, but they're all marked and there's notches everywhere. Yeah. I yeah. thought, wouldn't it be nice if you have a minimalist ruler experience? Right, here's the replacement to your 30 centimeter ruler. And, and you just saw me run around and make these. Um, after, after the sparkling wine tasting, it's a single 18 centimeter ruler. Okay. And a single 12 centimeter ruler. So here you are. There you okay. Go. That's, that's thank my you. new product. Thank you. And it's with a these, minimalist pair of rulers. With these rulers, uh, yep. you've only marked yep. zero to 12. Uh, I'm guessing that's centimeters. Yep. And then you've got four and 10. Yes. Yeah, so there's only, there's only two notches. So that whole card is 12 centimeters long. Yeah. But I've just labeled it in case we forget. Uh, yeah, sure. And there are now two notches in the middle, one at four and one at 10. So if you gave me the smaller one, it would just say four and 10. Yeah. And I just have to know that, I mean, everyone knows that the beginning is zero. The beginning is zero. I wrote it on for completeness. But I just need to know that this is a 12 centimeter ruler. It's a 12 ruler. centimeter ruler. But 12 isn't written on there. No. All we all I've labeled is four and 10. 10. Yeah, yeah. And then on this other one. Yep. 18 centimeter ruler. This is an 18 centimeter ruler. Yep. The only thing that's on there is 17. Isn't that great? A single notch. How, how pleasing and minimalist is that ruler? I don't like it. Why not? Uh, it makes life hard. What do you mean? It, that, those two rulers yeah. can measure mm -hmm. every distance between 1 and 30. Okay. So if you want to measure 1... You've got the end of the 18 centimeters because you mark 17. Sure. Yeah. Yep. So there you go, there you go. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay. If you want to measure two it, between 10 and 12. Yeah, exactly. And three. So I need two rulers for this. I can't use Correct. one ruler. No, two rulers. I mean, you've already doubled the amount of rulers that Yeah, I but need. now they stack. So the whole thing's only 18 centimeters long. Oh, so I can fit into a small, uh, into yeah. a small, small, a small pencil case. I mean, I do have a 15 centimeter ruler that fits in a small pencil case. Yeah, but you can't measure up to 30, can you? If I have two of them, yes. Yeah, but there's so many notches. That's true. I'm trying to get away the from numbers. the notches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, want okay, a yeah, notch-free yeah. experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sure. So if I want three, yep. 
then oh, you like you're going to make the me add... Yeah, the one and the two. It gives you three. Oh, my gosh. Yep. What, uh-huh. do, you want, what do you want four? Zero to four. There you on go. The easy. Two easy. It's right there. Line. Yeah. Five. Is, uh, oh, my gosh. Is it four to ten? Take away the 17 to 18. Nah, yeah, yeah, yeah. The four and the one. So 17 to 18 gives you the one and you put it next to the four. Yeah. Yeah. And then six. You six can... is at least four to ten. Easy. Yeah. I don't mind that one. And then seven, you just put the one on the either end of the six. Yeah. And they're all there. They're all every every single one. Now sometimes you have to go down. So if you want, let's say, sixteen, you come mm-hmm. one back in from seventeen, mm-hmm. which you can do. Yeah. And every single one, you can line the rulers up in such a way that you can measure everything. So instead of this, Matt, why bother? Why not just have a one centimeter ruler? Because then you'd have to have 30 of them. You need 30 of them to measure something at once. Yeah, but you can fit it into a what you can fit into your pocket. (laughs) You can put it in a bag. Yeah, but you're basically carrying dice. So like, oh, let me just line up my 30. I'm sorry, that's so much worse. There's only two. You can't lose one. Do you know what? I want a 30 centimeter ruler that folds up. Ah. Accordion style. Okay. Now folding rulers exist like a standard ruler that just folds in half. Yeah. That's the thing. No, but I want I want one that folds down to one co- centimeter. Yeah, no, okay, right, okay. That's a different product. You, you cannot have fewer three notches, like you're measuring ten times. Mm. There's ten times more intervals you can measure than there are notches on those two rulers. Let it be known that I want there to be a Twitter poll when this episode comes oh, out. <laughs> that's a and great I want, product. I want to know whether people were more likely to want your two differently sized, inconveniently notched. <laughs> Or conveniently notched as oh, the way you so say it. so slick. Rulers. Yep. Or yep. a 30 centimeter ruler that folds up to <laughs> one <laughs> centimeter. <laughs> it's a real thick ruler. What's it supposed well, it to? depends what you made it with. <laughs> oh, that's, that's a good point. Okay. I would do that on the condition that mm. you make your prototype out of cardboard. Oh, yeah. I can do it right now. Exactly. Yeah. And we'll, we'll do side by side photos. Okay. And people can decide which is the superior. Modern ruler innovation. Fantastic. (laughs) Deal. It's time for AOAOBB. Well, don't look at me like that. Any it's such other, a, any other that's business, a look at, business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Any any other AOB business. Any other bubbles. Ah, uh, you got some bubbleness for you for us. <laughs> <laughs> so have people responded to our bubble V Nubble survey? In episode 052, Piping Hot Baths and Predicting with Graphs, we were talking about whether bubbles make a difference to bath Temperature of a bath. Heat. Yeah. Is it, is it like a blanket on the bath? Yeah. So the first thing we asked yeah. was whether people's coffee preferences meet the amount of bubbles that they have in the bath. This had gotcha. nothing to do with the experiment, but it was a, no, a question. It was the that, first time ever we went off on a tangent. Yeah. And so and we decided got, to answer a different problem. We got a couple of answers yep. uh, that I thought were worthy of uh, reading out. Matthew said, my coffee drink, espresso. My Ooh. bubble preference, none, never. Matches. Matches. My bathing podcast preference, a problem squared. Ah. So thanks, Matthew. Hope you're having a lovely if bath Matthew right now. Matthew drinks espresso in the bath, that would close the whole loop on that one. Yeah, and they would get incredibly dehydrated. <laughs> Small price to pay for. <laughs> we also had uh, Michael, a fellow Aussie, who said they were listening to the discussion this morning before work. I, I'm assuming on the way to work and not in the bath. Uh, their preference is a nice hot cappuccino. And in a bath, they want as many bubbles as possible. Tick. The more bubbles, the better. And they also agreed that bubble beards make an appearance in every bubble bath they've ever had. That's very funny. Thanks, Michael. I agree. And we also had one here from an anonymous Whoa. person. They have provided zero information about they themselves. They don't want their bubble preferences getting out. And I think the reason is they said, I know you said for people who don't like baths or coffee not to bother with the pole. We did. However, I do not care for bubble baths and I don't drink coffee. So I think this is the kind of correlation that you're looking for and would fit your poll results. (sighs) It's a valid point. They're the null case in both situations. Mm, Yeah. yeah. Mm. We also did run a survey for people to confirm if their preferences align. And we had like we had about 49, 49 people say yes. Yeah, matches. we don't know what we that's out We should have asked if people didn't. But Actually, yeah, do you fine. know, to be fair, it does say, because you do get these analytics yeah. on uh, Twitter. Oh, it yeah. It did say that it was out of 1,123. But it is hard to know if 
Yeah, Those we views are. were just people scrolling past we it. We did not think that survey through. No, we didn't. We're oh, sorry. Well. That uh, was bad science. Now, I did also put out a call for help, much like your call for help at the beginning of this episode. Uh, yep. And I said, if anyone, especially in a colder climate, yep. could do the experiment. Oh, yeah. They have a bath. The bath experiment, not the coffee. They do one without bubbles. One with. One with. Yep. Measure the temperature outside, inside, before and after. Yep. Zero people have done this experiment. <laughs> I have absolutely no results to go from. Thanks for nothing, guys. It's like a million of you. Come on. <laughs> I mean, we've had people tell us they like baths. Uh, oh, yeah. Thanks. But did they bother doing the experiment? That's no. Very funny. You went to the trouble of writing. Look, I don't want to shame anyone who's written in. You went to the trouble people of People aren't listening in. to this podcast to do the work themselves. That's fair. Do you know what? That's fair. And now I'm back in a colder climate, so I could arguably, can I can do the experiment now. I went into the BBC the other day. The bubble bath. Cons- the, the bubble bath. <laughs> convention. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You know the one. <laughs> and at the bubble bath convention, uh, I was in to talk uh, on more or less the BBC Radio 4. Oh, yes. Both program and podcast about statistics. And I mm. pop up occasionally to chat. In this case, I was talking about a spreadsheet mistake that had been made. Mm-hmm. So when I walk in, the host, Tim Harford, the first words out of Tim's mouth, oh, I was just listening to you talk about repeating baths. <laughs> and I was like, what? <laughs> just out of nowhere. He's like, oh, no, sorry. Yeah. Because, I mean, he does a bunch of, he, he has got an amazing um, podcast called Cautionary Tales. He does yes. all the stuff for the BBC. He's like, oh, yeah, of course, because he's used to, you know, you record a lot of things. And I'd totally forgotten repeating baths was part of that, <laughs> the bubble bath chat. Yeah. But the reason why this becomes more relevant is Tim very kindly mentioned a problem squared in mm. the program. It's nice to know that Tim knows about my bathing experiences. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, when I was leaving, I don't think Tim would mind me saying this, as we were, because we were, I know Tim really well, and we're, we're heading out. Uh, in the BBC, you got to kind of get escorted back out of the building, and he volunteered. Yeah, well, to you do. I do. I do. I do. <laughs> I've stolen a lot of stuff. <laughs> so on the way out... <laughs> Uh, it used to be the BBBBBC. I've <laughs> <laughs> got a lot of bees. <laughs> so many bees. So anyway, on the way out, uh, Tim walks me out. He's like, oh, hey. And then he's like, oh, because he's like, I almost said say hi to Beck for me. And he's like, because I feel like I know Beck, but I don't know Beck. So I was going to say, Tim feels like he knows you and says say hi. Oh, thanks. I'm sure I feel like I know part- Tim. Yeah, because you listen to his podcast. Yeah. So yeah, anyway, you're both, you've got a, what's the, like, the symmetric version of a parasocial relationship. You've, What's the what now? <laughs> there's a parasocial relationship, yes. which is where you watch someone in media or you like YouTube or social media and you like you develop a relationship with them, yeah. but they don't have a clue who you are. Mm. But, but you, we've had you've a... got complementary parasocial yeah, relationships. Right. Oh, do you know what? That is a, the next Netflix rom-com, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I would, I, we should write that. We should, yeah. We anyway, back to anyway, bars. Anyway, yeah. Uh, No one helped me with that, but I did get some interesting information from Ken with a double N. They say, fun fact, in Japan, it's very common to have electronically controlled baths which fill automatically. You select the temperature and water level you want and click a button. They also come with covers so you can keep the heat in while it fills up. Like a pool. You can also time the filling if you're so inclined. On the flip side, they tend to be quite small baths. I thought it was going to say on the flip side it empties. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Wow. Anyway, bath chat. <laughs> Good, great, great. Any other bathness? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, back on any other business. Mm. We've mentioned this before. I'm going to say it right now. This is an award-winning podcast. What? Well, we've won awards. Have we? Not the podcast. We have. Oh, as in you and I have individually yeah, we've, we've, won we've awards. we've individually won awards. Yeah. And we do the podcast. If we combine them. Therefore, it's an award-winning sure. podcast. Yeah, all right. I'll take that. Yeah, it works, works for me. Mm-hmm. Um, and I won an award back in 2020. Wow. When we had just started this podcast. Yeah. So, you know, it's still officially the podcast exactly. award. I think that's what got me over the line. Yeah. yeah. So every two years, a bunch of math societies get together and hand out something called the Zeman Medal, which is like the UK prize for math communication. Oh. And it may not surprise you. That, that's pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, guy here locked that in. In 2020. Oh, wow. Yeah. You kept that quiet. I feel like that's something you would have mentioned every time we saw each other. And this is the first time oh, I've heard of it. Oh, it's because they haven't given me the physical medal. If I had that, I'd be wearing it around my neck. Oh, I'm like Rubbing that. it in your face. It's a good thing they yeah. haven't given it to you. Well, they finally. Oh, no. The pandemic is over, apparently. So there's been another winner. 
So I was like, why don't we wait for the next winner? Because every two years, 2022 was coming up. Yep. Because originally, like, do you want like an online ceremony? No. And I was like, that's like the opposite of an of a prize. Yeah. So I was like, let's just wait. We'll wait. The pandemic could be over one day. We'll have the ceremony there. Mm -hmm. And then I said, I don't mind sharing it with the next winner. The next that's winner nice. was Simon Singh in 2022, ah. a mass author and broadcaster. Yep. And Simon's like, why don't we have a joint award? I'm like, I've been saying that for two years now. And so they finally organized our joint award. Lovely. And I thought I'd like to invite the listeners of A Problem Squared oh. to the award ceremony. When and where? It's on the 22nd of March. Okay. Write this down. Everyone, get your pens out. Yep. 22nd of March, 2023. We'll Just in case you're listening to this, well. like you're in March 2024 and you're like, no. <laughs> There's a link. We'll put that in the show notes. Is it the Royal Society? Oh. Which is very fancy. Great. Uh, they've got a bust of my wife. So you can play. <laughs> it took find, me a second to realize what you were saying. You find the bust of my wife. Bust of my wife. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's how they describe it on the tours. <laughs> also, a bust of your wife does sound like it's her chest. Yeah, because yeah. I mean that it's that, or I say they got my wife's bust torso. Torso. I don't know if that's any torso? better. It is a torso. You're right. It is a bust, isn't it? It's also got a head. Yeah. Yeah. They've got the upper half of my <laughs> wife, <laughs> minus arms, <laughs> slightly bigger than life size. So, <laughs> that's so cool. On display. Yeah. I. 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 I these are Does she have I've to get the cast and everything for yeah, it? Yeah, she had to go sit for it. Does she have to do a whole like head? Dip her in plaster of Paris. No, because I've she had my he I've had my head cast. You have, you have, and they had, had, had to cover my entire head in plaster. No, th th this she sits down and an artist looks at her. Ah, oh, okay. She does several sittings over several days, and the artist uh, makes a, a sculpture based on uh, my wife. Oh. It's good. It's a good sculpture. It's terracotta. It's really nice. So anyway, that's a distraction. That's also at the Royal Society. So it's a real two for one. Mm. And Lucy will be there as well. We'll make her stand next to it. She'll hate that immensely. Yeah, great. Yeah. Uh, so it's on the 22nd of March in the evening in London. Uh, we'll have a link to the website. So it's free to attend, free drinks. Mm -hmm. I'm I there. do a talk. Simon Singh does a talk. You're going to be there. Producer Lauren's going to be there. You can meet the whole gang. And it's free to attend, but you have to email an RSVP and check there are still seats available. Ah. So uh, then you can email in, email Catherine and say, I'd like to come along and they'll let you know if there are tickets still available, put you on the mm. list. And yeah, it, in in my acceptance speech, I'll name a problem squared. Okay. And I want everyone who's there from problem that. squared to cheer to say ding. <laughs> oh my gosh! Yes. At once. Okay. I'll even I'll be like, any problem squareds in? And they'd be like ding, and they're like, hey. It's real embarrassing when it's just Lauren and I this dinging. Is, yeah. In fact, I'll have a word with Lauren. It might just be you. So <laughs> now come along. Don't don't let Beck be there on her own. Don't let me ding on my own. Yeah. No, that's, that's no one likes right. a lone dinger. <laughs> exactly. Thank you very much for listening to A Problem Squared. A huge thank you to our Patreon supporters who fund this whole endeavor and all the tax-deductible booze that we use for important science purposes. Now, we like to choose three of our Patreon supporters at random to thank at the end of each episode, which this episode includes... Justin Begley. Julian Freeman. Gavin Saxby. Thank you so much to them and all the other Patreon supporters they represent. Uh, this has been the podcast APS. I've been MP, joined by BH and our producer, LAC. Lauren Armstrong Carter. See you next time. Bye. <laughs>Beck, I've got a question for you. Go on. I've just looked at the question. <laughs> it's going to go. uh, the question is, what are you wearing? Well, <laughs> and the options are. <laughs> Do you know what? It would have been creepier if we weren't in the same room. I know. I know. <laughs> I, I was like, I went, oh, that's creepy. But you could, could be say worse. Could be in worse. a really horrible way. Oh, what are you wearing? What are you wearing? <laughs> Wait, you, what are you wearing? Or say it like but a if paparazzi. you're wearing that. What are you wearing? And I'm wearing this. <laughs> 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 Who's wearing the bus? Okay, no, so. Uh, <laughs> Let's uh, just change clothes one day. <laughs> we should. <laughs> are you wearing a frown? Lipstick. You've got nine options here. Jeans. Nothing. <laughs> Glasses. What a reveal. <laughs> I know. <laughs> a moustache. A suit. A cool hat. A t-shirt. <laughs> Do you know what? I'm not wearing any of those things. Are you, are you sad that you're not wearing any of those things? 
you know what? No, no. I'm ah, because one of them's a frown. frown. We could have got away I'm with that. I'm going to go with t-shirt. Deal. And for any new listeners, uh, you basically Matt is trying to decipher which Muppet we are yep. by asking one question per episode. <laughs> We're going to get there. All right. All right. Cool. Two down. When we get to the end, we can post the link so any listeners can compare what Muppet they are compared to us. Oh, the link's already in the show notes. Oh, get involved, everyone. Oh, I don't want to get them ahead of us, though. Well, oh, they can no. start guessing who they, they guess. think we are. They can work out what Muppet we are. Yeah. We'll find out in like 10 episodes. <laughs>